Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Today I'm bringing you a fun Valentine's Day project. It's this cute little heart dish with a flower mandala design in the center. I've used this stencil and dish combo before and it's a total winner. So in the video, I'm going to show you how to use this flexible stencil on all kinds of curvy surfaces. We'll also go over things like the magic of PBO prism paints and a trick that I've found to control the shape of them using applicator bottles and thick paint. I'm even going to dip into my stash of top shelf golden paints for this one. Of course, a good portion of this video is going to be spent adding dots of different colors and techniques with different tools. Um, you know, because that's what dotting is and that's what I do, it's my deal. Ah. We'll do some fun finishing touches using enamel paint markers and I'll show you an easy method to add a thick glass-like surface to the center heart for a jewel look. And then we'll finish strong with a triple thick gloss glaze varnish. So fun. Speaking of fun, hey, thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do because I would love to have you as a new subscriber. So let's get painting. This is a fun one. And I know I say that about all the videos, but this time I really mean it. So let's paint a heart dish, shall we? So for this project, you'll need a heart dish, a flower stencil. I used these paints and I mixed them to achieve all the different colors in between. I did a terrible job of giving you the formula for each of the colors, but if you have those colors, you'll know which tints belong with which color. Um, or you can just kind of eyeball it and use what you've got. And as for the tools, you just wanna grab your smallest stylus tools or silicone tools. Basically, we're making a bunch of tiny little dots. So um, get all your smallest dotting tools. So the first step is I painted a chalky base coat on my heart dish so that my chalk lines will show up. And then I'm using my five inch flower stencil on the dish. Now, First thing, I'm going to find vertical center on the dish and then just place the center where I want it to fall on the dish. Now I'm going to grab some putty so that I can put a little tiny piece in the center and just squish it down so that it stays in place as I trace the whole design on the dish. So then once the design is fully transferred onto the dish, I just take my pencil and connect the lines and I decided to make a little heart in the center. And now I'm gonna use an applicator bottle filled with a thick heavy body paint to create a barrier line so that I can apply some PBO paint in the center and I'll show you exactly what that does. Now you can do just a regular center dot and that would look beautiful, but I wanted to um, use this special PBO prism paint and I'll show you what that does in a second. It's so much fun to play with and uh, yeah, you just gotta see it to believe it. Okay, so that has dried overnight and it's nice and thick, the edge, so that I know that once I apply the PBO paint, it's going to have a place to kind of settle. One thing you have to do is mix up this paint really, really well. And then just apply it. You can apply it with a cone or um, one of these pipettes. And you can reuse these pipettes too, by the way. But you wanna get a really thick application and I added a little bit of purple and just watch. So it kind of moves. This is a time-lapse video, but it moves and shapes and makes little cells of color. And then you let this dry overnight and look at how cool. Isn't that a neat little effect? So then once that's dry, I'm just gonna go along the edge of that heart with some gold dots.
And now using a mix of quinacridone violet and the cadmium red, I'm just going to make little drop shapes in the center of each of those six petals. And now using a tint of that quinacridone violet, I'm going to make two little lavender drops along the edge of that darker drop on each petal. And now taking that darkest red, we're going to just walk the dots along the outside line of the petals, just along the inside section of the petals. I'm going to do the outside edge in a brighter red. And what I'm doing here is just kind of smoothing out all the chalk lines so none of the little chalk bits are going to um, affect this paint because this golden paint is very, very fluid and uh, liquidy and just the slightest little surface um, you know, piece of chalk powder could affect how the drops or how the dots fall. And so we're just gonna um, go along the inner edge of all those petals with that dark red. Okay, so now we're gonna use that cadmium red hue and walk the dots along the edges of each of the petals. So you know how sometimes with reds when they dry, especially with acrylic paint, they can darken well, this golden paint seems to retain its vibrance when it dries on a dark background, which is super awesome. And now using your darkest red and your largest stylus tip, just placed one dot in the center of each of those petals. And now using your tiniest tool, which is my 1 8 inch um, pointed silicone tool. I'm just going to outline each one of those red dots with white dots. And these are super tiny, but I'm, I'm zoomed in so much here that it seems a lot bigger than it actually is. But these are so super, super tiny dots um, right along the outside of those big red dots. And now using that same tool, I'm just going to take that red and extend it into the tips of the petals in no particular order, just filling the outside edge with tiny little red dots. Now using a pink color, just going to do little swooshes along the middle section of those petals. So then any empty spaces within that flower I filled with those lavender colored dots and now I'm going to go along the edge of the entire flower with tiny gold dots just all along the outside edge of that flower. Okay, so now that the center flower is complete, we're going to work on that second row of petals and I'm going to use 100% ultramarine blue for this next set of petals. And this is a, a transparent color, so I know it's going to dry dark, but I'm completely okay with that because I want that center flower to kind of pop out a little bit. And I know that if I have that gold outlined flower next to a dark blue line, it's going to, um, the blue will recede into the background and the gold will 
kind of move into the foreground a little bit. So we're going to create a little bit of a gradient shadow on this next row of petals. And now adding white to that ultramarine, it's going to give you a really vibrant blue. And then we're going to use our largest stylus tool to walk the dots, uh, extending out from that ultramarine out th to the edges of the petals. And now add more white to that blue and it gives you an even lighter tint of that ultramarine which then you can apply along the edges of each of those rounded petals all the way around. Okay, so we're done with that second row of blue petals. So now we're gonna add red, a big red dot in the, on the edge of those rounded petals. And then using a silicone tool, just pull a point down so that it lines up with the center of the previous two petals. Just a drop shape right in the middle. And now using gold and a smaller stylus tool, we're just gonna make two little swooshes on either side of that red drop shape. And now we're gonna apply an even thinner swoosh using a pointed silicone tool and our darkest red color. And now to outline those rounded petals, just walk the dots with our darkest red all along the edge, creating a big dot right in the center and then having the dots taper to smaller dots along the sides. And now using a lighter tint of that quinacridone magenta, you just apply another row of those tapered dots, largest dot in the center, and then walking it out from the center all the way down. And that will give you a nice gradient going from dark to light along the edge of those pointed petals. And now along the edge, we're gonna add the lightest tint of that pink color using our largest stylus tool so that it has a really dramatic size difference. So right here at the top of the dish, I feel like it should come with a warning label. This section where the two halves of the heart come together and there's that little V shape, you wanna make extra sure that those two lines, especially because they're that light pink in there, they got a lot of contrast, you wanna make sure they're as symmetrical as possible because if they're off a little bit, you'll really notice. Um, where if you look underneath them, those lighter magenta dots, those are all kinds of wonky, but no one's gonna know because that mid-tone color is so close to the background color that you can kind of fudge that a little bit. And you know what? Hey, that's fine. Nobody's perfect, right? 
but I thought I'd let you know about that that top section that really has to, and then that point at the bottom that has to be perfect too but everything else you can just get away with all kinds of stuff okay so we finished those red petals now we're gonna go right back into blue and add a large dot in the center of the remaining three petals and then we're going to take our silicone tool and extend that shape into a drop so that it fits snug right in between those petals. And then to fill these petals, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just apply dots in a, uh, a tint that goes from dark to light, light being the uh, last color that you use in that pointed petal. So at this point, I decided to get creative and um, I wanted to do a blue outline, but then I was like, no, I think I want this to be a red heart dish. I think it will make it uh, look a little bit cooler. And I wanted to use that cadmium. So um, you just take your brush and then go along the edges of each of those petals and just um, paint the background and this color this cadmium red is transparent but because it has a deep red base coat it will maintain its vibrancy and the color will look really true and really nice and you can see there's brush strokes here but once you apply a glaze at the end it evens out all those brush strokes and you can't even see um, any of that kind of globby, uh, you know, brush stuff. I'm not, I, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? All right, let's just watch. Okay, so see when it dries that the brush strokes kind of go away. Um, and now I'm gonna add some top dots using tints of the same colors and just add a little bit more detail in the center. So this might be my favorite part um, there are certain points in a piece where you just get your brain gets an extra shot of creative adrenaline or something and right here when I was applying those really bright blue dots on top of that red background the uh, vibrancy of that is just so exciting um, it also hides that line a little bit um, where I painted the red background, which is a nice little trick. Um, and then I just extended that gradient outwards. And um, I think that looks really neat. Okay, so that has dried overnight. I'm gonna take a Q-tip or you can take a cloth, you don't have to be super dainty about it. And just a wet cloth and just take that the chalk lines off. You can see how easy that chalk pencil comes off. It does not make you scrub it. It's just very, very easy to remove. There you go. Yeah, you just take the cloth and do that. It's a lot easier. And then I decided rather than having it be uh, red on the bottom, I'm going to paint it blue for a nice contrast. So added that ultramarine, just 100% ultramarine along the bottom. 
Oh, and then the finishing touches. They're so fun. So this is the Arteza paint marker in gold. This is the one that I use. It comes in a set, but um, this is the one that I use all the time. And there's something about enamel paint that is just more shiny than uh, acrylic paint. I don't know if you've found that to be true, but this is also really easy to apply for lines like this. I trust my marker skills much better than my brush skills along an edge like this. And it just makes that edge look nice and finished and cool. And now here's a nice trick. So see that center heart? When it dried, it kind of had a little concave section. It's not really as popped out as I want it to be. I want it to look like a little jewel in the center. So you can add pouring medium, um, flood that with pouring medium, and it applies opaque, but then overnight it will dry and become hard and clear, and it just looks like a little uh, gem. Neat little trick. So here I'm going to use Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Gloss Glaze to spray the bottoms of my dishes first. Get those nice and dry and shiny and then I want to um, flip them over and do the front and now you can see the front see how the heart is all nice and um, thick the back the glaze just looks nice and, and pretty now we're gonna take the spray and spray it get a nice thick coat on there sometimes it's good to do two passes just depends on how thick but you can see how it evens out all the brush strokes and it makes it really uh, nice and contrasty and just kind of makes all the colors a little bit more brilliant this is the other design that I did I'll show you guys that one next week so the cool thing about that one is it's the same exact stencil same exact paint colors just a completely different design pretty cool huh so thanks for watching guys and in case you didn't know I totally heart you and I hope you hearted this video and if you did hit the like button and subscribe and as always you can visit me over at the dotting center on Etsy and pick up any dotting supplies that you might need. I'm there to help you out. So happy Valentine's Day and I will see you next time.